we now look at uh, what are called maximal planar graphs okay so a planar graph uh, uh, is given to you let's say okay now one question that you can ask is that uh, can i add any more edges to this graph right any edges between non adjacent vertices right so that the graph remains uh, planar so if i can do that then the graph is not maximal right so i can still add more edges if that is not possible then we say the graph is maximal planar so let us look at one example right uh, so here uh, the graphs given below right all are uh, uh, maximal planar right of course the single edge you cannot add any more edge uh, it is maximal planar and if you take uh, the triangle right which is a, a complete graph again it, you cannot add any more that for that is also maximal planar similarly k4 is maximal planar because it has uh, it has all the possible edges and it is planar and now here you have another graph which is a planar graph right i claim that this is maximal planar you cannot add any more edges so i want you to think about why uh, this graph uh, is maximal right you cannot add any more edges to make it uh, i mean like to to still keep it planar right? on the other hand uh, let us take another uh, another uh, graph right let us say this so this graph is uh, you know not maximal planar right because i can i can add more edges to it like this edge can i add any more edges i can still add more edges and uh, to make it keep uh, still planar for example i can add this edge now is it maximal planar i say that it is not i can still add more edges for example i can add uh, this edge right or uh, i could have added for example this one so uh, it is also uh, still uh, maximal uh, i mean uh, it's also planar now can i add any more edges i claim that uh, i cannot add any more edges so that the graph will still be planar if i add any other edge for example between this to right or uh, any other uh, non adjacent vertices you will see that uh, the graph is uh, not planar anymore so this has become maximal planar so what is this property uh, that makes it maximal planar can you think about this but uh, our definition says that if you cannot add any more uh, uh, new edges to make the graph uh, or keep the graph planar then the graph is maximal planar <coughs> so uh, as a homer uh, prove that if a graph uh, on at least three vertices is maximal planar then every face boundary is a three cycle so this is a, a nice property if the graph is maximal planar you take any embedding of this graph you will see that every phase boundary will be a three cycle now if every phase is a three cycle you cannot add any edges in this cycle right uh, because any three are adjacent there and uh, if you do anything else you will see that that is not going to be uh, keeping the planarity on the other hand if a phase boundary is not a three cycle you can find two non adjacent vertices and within that phase you can draw a curve connecting this two. therefore the graph will be still planar right so this is the idea second question uh, is to prove uh, using the property uh, that we just uh, showed uh, to show that uh, g is maximal planar with uh, at least three vertices then uh, it has exactly uh, 3n minus 6 edges okay the planar graph 
uh, which is maximal planar, has exactly 3n minus 6 like this. <coughs> now, if you uh, want to prove uh, the earlier result that a planar graph has at most 3n minus 6 edges, you can also first uh, start with the graph G, right? Add as many edges as you can to make the graph maximal planar, and then show that now every phase boundary is a triangle, and show that using this, you will be able to uh, uh, do a counting where the number of edges is actually equal to 3 and minus 6. And therefore, since I added more edges, right, without adding any vertices, I added more edges to make uh, in a maximal planar graph, and you still have only 3 and minus 6, you will see that any planar graph that we started with has less than or equal to 3 and minus 6 edges. Right? So this is another uh, way to prove it. Now, here is another question. Uh, use Jordan curve theorem to prove that K5 is not planar. Okay. So again, it is a very nice exercise if you can do it yourself. So think about this. Can you use Jordan curve theorem alone to prove K5 is not planar you, without using the Euler identity? So here I, I present a solution. So what does the Jordan curve theorem say? It says that a simple closed curve separates the plane to two disjoint open sets. Right? One is the interior part and the exterior part. So how do you use this to uh, prove non-planarity of K5. So here, let us see. So what we do is that we we name the vertices as V1, V2, etc., V5. Okay. Now we know that the graph is complete, which means that between any two uh, any two vertices there is an edge. So if you take V1, V2, V3, they form a triangle, right? There is there is a complete subgraph, therefore they form a triangle. So V1 V1 uh, is uh, connected to uh, V2 and V3. Now, this uh, forms a closed curve because you have this uh, three cycle. Now, this three cycle div uh, you know, divides the region, right, the plane into two parts. One is the interior part, and one is the exterior part. Now, since uh, you are looking for an embedding of K5, you have to add the other other vertices, also, right? So you want to place the vertex uh, V4 uh, on the plane. Of course, uh, the only possible places where you can place this are either uh, inside or outside. Both are identical, right? So we will we will uh, not worry about this. We will see that one of the cases is sufficient, right? By symmetry, we will assume that. The vertex V4 is kept, kept inside. So we, we can assume that the fourth vertex is either inside or outside, so it can be inside. Right? So uh, you have the interior and exterior, so look at the interior part. We will assume that V4 is sitting in the interior. right? So we are going to keep V4 in the interior. Now if you keep V4 in the interior, now V4 is connected to V1, V2, and V3 because the graph, graph is complete. So we will get V4 connected to V1, V4 connected to V2, and V4 connected to V3. Now, this again divides the inside internal region of uh, you know the triangle, right? Uh, that we started with into three uh, sub regions, right? You have these three different phases. So you get the three different phases. Each one is a cycle, right? Boundary is a cycle, which is uh, V1, V4, V2, uh, and uh, back to V1. Or uh, you have V2, uh, V4, then V3, and V2. Or you have V3, V4, V1, and V2, uh, V3. V3, V4, V1, and V3, it's not V2. Right? So, <clears throat> So we have these three uh, sub-regions, right? So these are uh, regions of. Now the question is that, where are we going to keep 
the vertex B5, right? So suppose you take the vertex B5. We know that B5 is adjacent to V1, V2, and V3, right? It's adjacent to all other vertices. So in particular, it is adjacent to V1, V2, and V3. Now the only connected area where which is, uh, you know, uh, which is uh, having all these vertices, right? Is precisely the exterior face. So therefore, our uh, last vertex must be in the exterior face, right? The only place where I can keep V5 is the exterior face because it must be connected to V1, V3, and V2, all three. But then, if you keep it uh, in uh, you know uh, the exterior of C, V4 is in the interior of C, right? And therefore, the curve C, which is V1, V2, V3 cycle, that curve divides the region into two, right? Interior and exterior. And therefore, any path from V5 to V4 must necessarily cross the curve that we have just created, right? V1, V2, V3. But this is not possible, right? So therefore, uh, the uh, edge must cross the curve. So therefore, uh, the embedding is not planar. So hence, uh, uh, you know, you can just yes, use uh, uh, Jordan curve theorem to prove this. So similarly, I want you to do as a homework uh, to prove K33 is not planar by again using Jordan curve theorem. Okay. So think about uh, uh, this. Now. There are there are many other things one can one can do with these uh, things, but uh, for the time being, I want to uh, look at a uh, look at a different uh, topic, which is uh, very interesting and very powerful. Okay. This is called uh, the discharging method. Now, before going into the discharging method, let me tell you a little bit of history. So this method was developed by uh, Heast uh, in, uh, I think, if I remember correctly, in 1904. Now, uh, this result has uh, been used very less for uh, like maybe around 50 or 60 years. And after this, uh, or maybe 70 years, uh, after this, uh, this was used in a very, uh, very uh, famous uh, paper by uh, Ira Apple and uh, Hacken, at Wolfgang Hacken and uh, Ira Apple, who who proved in 1976 a very long-standing uh, conjecture called uh, four-color conjecture. Okay? So this. Uh, Four color conjecture came from the uh, following uh, question. There was, uh, you know, uh, in, in I think uh, it was in uh, probably 18, uh, 1850 or something, right? 1850, uh, 51, uh, if I remember uh, correctly. Right, uh, Francis Guthrie, right? He was a map maker. So he asked the following question, right? Suppose you have you have a map of a, of a country. Let's say we will assume uh, for uh, you know simplicity that all our countries are connected uh, uh, region that you don't have several uh, you know several uh, parts in the world which are a part of the same country, which is actually true. But we will assume that is not the case. Now, if you have uh, you know connected regions and you want to you want to color the map of uh, you know the world map, let's say, giving different colors for uh, different countries, right? Not necessarily different colors. Uh, you want to uh, uh, different colors for adjacent countries, so that you will see uh, you, know, uh, you know immediately like you know these two are different uh, countries or what is the border, etc. Now. Of course, one can one can say that okay, for, uh, use a different color for each country, right? This is this is definitely a possibility. But there are two issues with this, right? One is that uh, 
you know if the number of colors increases then the uh, the you know difficulty of resolution right uh, looking at a color and differentiating becomes more and more right? when the number of countries is high you know uh, you will have to use uh, different shades of colors which are close to each other so that many people may not be able to distinguish between the uh, small uh, difference in the colors so we cannot use too many different colors so it is always better to use as you know low uh, as the number of colors possible right to use the minimum number of colors like let's say just two or three then uh, you know it's very easy right you can just use like you know red blue green or some very contrasting colors so that uh, you know it's very uh, pleasing and immediately clear what is the uh, borders of the countries so you want to so the one natural question for a map maker is to see what is the minimum number of colors with which you can do the coloring so what this map maker observed is that uh, he can do with uh, four colors for all the uh, cases that he has seen right now he wanted to ask is it always possible right no matter how the country's uh, borders are can you always say that uh, we can we can color uh the graph with uh, uh, at most four colors now uh, this question was asked to some mathematician uh, friend and then uh, you know he kept it at a log he, he emailed to some famous mathematicians who looked at it and then uh, you know replied that uh, he is not clear he will look into it and then asked others and this problem has been in circulation and uh, many people have started looking at it and there were several attempts to prove this so after 125 years okay uh, in 1976 uh, finally it was proved by uh, apple and hacken uh, these two people uh, proved this method uh, proved this result using uh, a technique called uh, the discharging method now this discharging method proof uh became controversial because uh, the number of uh, cases in this was too huge so they had to use computer help you know they had to write some algorithm to verify whether the result is correct so the computer basically verified the calculations and therefore many mathematicians said that you no know, this result is not acceptable now what is the reason for them to say this this is uh, you know this has nothing to do with uh, you know uh, you know like uh, uh, you know, the the persons or uh, you know the uh, that it has been used with computers but the computers uh, has an inherent issue that you know a computer uh, is a, you know is an electronic device which usually in the manufacture people uh, say see that after some time uh, you know there could be some bugs now there are certain kinds of bugs which may be triggered only in the execution of certain specific sequences of instructions right? now there are several such bugs which appears in computer science you know everything will work fine only if you give a specific sequence of instruct instructions then the computer produces or the algorithm produces a wrong result now the mathematicians ask okay what happens if this particular uh, you know sequence of instructions was the algorithm that you use to solve the cases of the uh, uh, planar uh, the proof of the four color theorem so therefore they they you know they said that okay uh, we don't want to take it for granted but of course without any other proof we have to take it because you know this is a serious attempt and uh, you know we cannot find any problem with it other than the fact that it is using computers so uh, then after some time other people wanted to uh, see if they can come up with a, a different set of proofs and there are very famous mathematicians four of them in fact uh, robertson seymour uh, robin thomas and uh, and and uh, one more person still uh, and and thomas yeah so these four people uh, try to come up with a different proof without using the help of computers so they came up with a very different idea they simplified uh, the arguments of uh, apple and hacken 
they came up with uh, several uh, you know, uh, things and finally they said that okay they also need to use a discharging method and they also had to use the help of computers so after you know this was in 1996 if i remember correctly and then uh, there were a couple of more attempts and each of the attempts so far to prove this uh, always use the discharging method uh, eventually and also always use the uh, the help of computers to do some computers so if you can come up with uh, a proof uh, without using computers that would be great now the question uh, is about discharging method now the question is is the discharging method uh, you know so powerful that you know it is required to prove uh, for color theorem we don't know we so far all the results uh, you know all the proofs uh, have used discharging method but this method is very powerful uh, in the sense that it can be used to come up with uh, several structural properties of uh, classes of graphs including planar graphs and uh, not all applications of this method requires a help of computer so we are going to see some simple examples and study this method uh, and uh, of course uh, we don't have time to look at the proof of the focular theorem but uh, we will we will uh, we will uh, learn the technique that is used to prove the focular theorem so to look at the question again let us look at this map of india okay so we look at the map of india and uh, we want uh, to color the map using uh, the minimum number of colors so the aim is to try to use as many as least uh, colors as possible and then i uh, observe that i have to use at least four colors so why is that let us look at the map of current map of india and uh, and then uh, look at uh, the cases why uh, why we require uh, four different uh, colors we can why we cannot do with three colors so we will uh, start with the assumption that uh, or you know we start the uh, attempt by using only three colors so we will start with let's say one of the states madhya pradesh okay. so madhya pradesh definitely needs one color so i will start by giving it the color green now since adjacent uh, states should get different colors now immediately i see that uttar pradesh is adjacent to madhya pradesh right so therefore madhya pradesh must get a uh, different color so other than green i have to give some other color so let us say that i give blue okay. now we observe that rajasthan is bordering both madhya pradesh and uh, uttar pradesh so since they are, it is bordering both of this i cannot use either uh, blue or uh, green right so i use red to give rajasthan now when i go to gujarat i see that okay gujarat can be colored blue because it is adjacent to of course rajasthan and uh, madhya pradesh so i cannot give red or green but i can use blue so i will give give blue to gujarat then i come to uh, maharashtra so maharashtra is adjacent to both uh, madhya pradesh and gujarat so i have to use a color other than green and blue so i give red then i come to uh okay so this is not the current map i think uh, this is a map before the division of telangana and andhra pradesh right so let us say that this was uh, this was not uh, uh, green okay so so then i come to telangana right so telangana is uh, can be colored with uh, let us say uh, green right or blue actually because we are we are assuming that we have not colored anything else so let us say that i color telangana with green now no matter what i what i color uh, no i don't have to i don't have to go to telangana right because uh, yeah so now let us let us look at uh, let us look at this so now i look at uh, this is i think chatisgarh right so let us look at chatisgarh now chatisgarh is adjacent to both uh, you know madhya pradesh uh, maharashtra and also to uttar pradesh so therefore 
since uh, I had been forced to give, you know, uh, different colors to Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, and Maharashtra, right? Because all these colors were forced. I started with one color, green. Then uh, I had to use a different color, so I used blue. I had to use a third color, so I had to use uh, red. Now I don't have a choice to give, if I'm using only three colors, I don't have a choice to give anything other than uh, uh, blue uh, to Gujarat. And similarly, I did not have a choice uh, to give anything other than red to Maharashtra, if I'm using only three colors. And therefore, I had uh, been forced to give three different colors to Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, and Maharashtra. Now, Chhattisgarh is adjacent to all these three, neighboring all these three. So, therefore, I cannot give any of these three colors to Chhattisgarh. So, I have to use a different color, let's say brown. Right? So, this is the uh, argument uh, to see that we need four colors to give uh, the uh, colors to the districts, uh, the states of uh, India. Right? At least four. Now, the claim is that four is sufficient. Right? Why is that? So now, one can immediately convert this into a graph theory question, uh, as you can uh, probably see now, right? Just uh, put uh, vertices at each state, right, center of each state. Then whenever two uh, states have a common borderline, you put uh, an edge connecting them. So that defines the graph, right? And, uh, this tells us uh, how to convert the map coloring problem to a graph coloring problem, right? So now I have to color the vertices, right? If I give a vertex a color, you know, it cannot get any uh, adjacent vertices cannot get any uh, the, that color. So therefore, uh, if I have a coloring of the map, I have a coloring of the graph. And if I have a coloring of the graph, uh, vertices of the graph, I have a coloring of the map also. So I have converted the map coloring problem to a vertex coloring problem, right? Sorry. So I have converted into a vertex coloring problem. So now one can show that uh, converting this kind of maps to graphs, right? If uh, assuming that you know the regions that we are looking at are all connected, uh, you know, single uh, regions, right? Then uh, uh, then uh, you can show that the graph that you obtain uh, are planar graphs, right? In fact, there are more uh, planar graphs that you can obtain. Uh, you know, like there are there are uh, you know all all the graphs that you obtain from the map uh, by doing this are planar graphs, uh, assuming that you know maps are connected regions, and uh, but of course. Uh, there are other planar graphs which are not uh, obtainable this way. Also. But we now prove that for every planar graph, uh, we can do with four colors. So therefore, it says that maps can also be colored with four colors. So that is the idea of the, uh, I mean, that is the idea of converting this to a graph uh, problem. So now people are looking at solving this question on the graph coloring, right? Not just map coloring, also graph coloring. So this graph coloring has been active for like almost 125 years and uh, before it was finally proved. So there were some very interesting attempts uh, to prove this and uh, some of them, uh, you know, stood, uh, you know, people believed it to be correct for uh, almost 11 years uh, and before uh, somebody found there is a problem in the proof. So it's always, uh, uh, you know, a good idea to look carefully before accepting any you know, any even accepted within quotes uh, results as uh, true, right? Because uh, people can, all of, of course, uh, miss some uh, important points and then think that it is correct. But anyway, uh, let us uh, continue. So the four color conjecture uh, was that any planar graph can be properly vertex colored with at most four colors. So this was. Uh, Open for from 1952 to 1976. Uh, I, I think I, I mentioned uh, nine, 18, 1852 to 1976. I mentioned as 1851. I think it was 1852. Now, uh, 
So if you, if you recall, uh, you know, the proper coloring of a graph is basically assigning uh, colors to the vertices such that uh, adjacent vertices get differentialized. So here is an example of a proper uh, for coloring of a planar graph. So here you have a planar graph and you have colored with four colors. And can you show that four colors are uh, necessary, right? Yeah, or, or you cannot do with less colors, or if you can actually do with less colors, uh, show that also, right? So, <clears throat> Now, uh, uh, so this is something that uh, we already mentioned that, uh, you know, the first proof of uh, this, uh, you know, was uh, proved by uh, Apple and Hacken in 1976 used the uh, discharging method and needs a computer substance. Now, this uh, original paper was around, uh, you know, around 2000 uh, page because, uh, you know, of the different computations and all the calculations that were uh, there. Then, uh, uh, you know, the second proof came in 1996, uh, Robertson, Seymour, Steele and Thomas. And they also use discharging method and uh, they also required computer resistance, but they reduced the number of pages to something like 600 or something, if I remember. Then there were uh, other attempts, but all the known proofs, as we mentioned before, uh, use discharging method and computer help so far. So if you can come up with a proof without using computer help, you will be uh, a big uh, name in computer science. So let us look at a, uh, you know, a trivial example to uh, study the discharging method. 